what's in the package and what YouTuber inspired me to get this, updates, dollar bin finds, all that's next on what's on the rack. Avengers West Coast number 44, written and drawn by the ever-controversial and cranky John Byrne. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can still find number 44 in the dollar bin. You can't find number 45, but number 44 is still available in the dollar bin at your local comic shop. Speaking of John Byrne, we have Marvel 2-in-1, number 56, cover art by John Byrne and inks by Terry Austin. Terry Austin was always my favorite John Byrne inker. To find out why Ben's arm is in a sling, I need to go back and buy Marvel 2-in-1, number 54. Luckily, that issue is also in the dollar bin. Let's go from one great cover to the next, Marvel 2-in-1 number 62, cover art by the late great George Perez. Unfortunately, no interior art by George Perez, and unfortunately it's not Marvel 2-in-1 number 61, but it's close. Tundra was beating up Ben, Moon Dragon's beating up Ben, let's see if we can find an issue where the women aren't beating up on Ben. Marvel 2-in-1 number 65. This time, it's Anaconda beating up on Ben. You're all mine, Brick Man. When I'm finished, there won't be enough pieces to make a puzzle out of you. <laughs> Marvel 2-in-1 number 65 is part two of the Serpent Crown Affair, written by Mark Grunwald and Ralph Macchio. Cover interiors by the late, great George Perez. Marvel 2-in-1 number 48. This time, it's The Thing and Marvel's newest superhero sensation, The Jack of Hearts. I love this team-up book along with Spider-Man's Marvel team-up. Always loved Ben Grimm as a character. Easily a top 10 of mine. The first Marvel 2-in-1 I remember reading was number 19, where The Thing teams up with Tigra. Marvel 2-in-1 number 60. This issue, like many of the other ones, are filling holes I have in my Marvel 2-in-1 run. I got a subscription to the series with issue number 92 when I was a kid. However, the series ended with issue 100. I remember receiving a letter in a mail stating I had so many issues left and I had to choose a new title to finish out those issues. Of course, I chose the new thing title by John Byrne. Tales of the Teen Titans number 48. Right here we have some Marv Wolfman and George Perez greatness. This comic was released in 1984, what I would consider the height of me reading and buying comics. However, this is the first time I have ever owned this comic because one of my friends collected Teen Titans and all I had to do was read his issues. This is the first appearance of the Recombatants. Tales of the Teen Titans number 52. This is the first full appearance of Azrael. Not this Azrael, but this Azrael. Tales of the Teen Titans number 53. What's the trivia behind this? It is established in this issue that the ruling in the 1979 case Joker vs. the Batman made it acceptable for a proven mass crime fighter to preserve his personal identity in a court of law. This is what allows superheroes to testify in court without having to reveal their secret identities. Firestorm number 7. What's the significance of this comic? First appearance of Plastique. There were quite a few Firestorm comics in the dollar bins at my LCS. I think I can get a large chunk of the series from there. This concept and design of the character is what I'm familiar with. I'm sure the concept and the design of the character in today's comics are completely different. Adventures of Superman number 500. Still in the white poly bag. Significance of this one? First appearance of Steel, John Henry Irons. I have this issue, however, it's not in the poly bag. Had to take it out of the bag to read it. And the last pickup from the dollar bin was Superman number 120. I really liked the cover on this, and that was the reason I picked it up. This cover has to be inspired by the Neil Adams Superman number 233. While I was at the LCS, I not only stopped by the dollar bin, but went to the back issue bin to continue my goal of collecting issues 1 to 100 of Iron Man. I was able to pick up number 94 here for $10, and it's a beautiful cover by Jack Kirby.
Next pickup was Iron Man number 91 for $6. The cover was done by Herb Trimpey, who is best known for his work on The Incredible Hulk, The X-Men, and the first artist to ever draw Wolverine. Who out there doesn't want one of those Hulk 181s? Iron Man number 91 also has the distinction of being Bob Layden's first credited work on Iron Man. My last pickup for the day was Iron Man number 90. This one set me back $8, but this one also has a beautiful Jack Kirby cover. I'm going to try to collect as many as I can from my local LCS before I start looking at other places like eBay to reach my goal of 1 to 100. So I get this package from eBay. It's sitting on the counter. My wife says, hey, what's in the package? Confidently, I say, you're about to find out. I walk down to my comic room, which my wife affectionately calls the dungeon, and that confidence is quickly shattered. As you can see, I can't open the package. I have to take out a box cutter. Now, I watch these people do their unboxing videos all the time, and it's almost like it's a weapons display of all these knives and things that they use to cut these packages open. This particular purchase was inspired by the YouTuber, The Comic Book Estate. A link to his video is in the description below. I had this book on my watch list in eBay, and once he featured it in his video, I knew I had to purchase it. I purchased this book from South Bay Comics. I'll put a picture of the store QR code link in the video. I'm extremely happy with this purchase, but I'm also impressed with their packing. I'm always looking for cost-cutting measures, and what they've done is they've taken a priority mail box, which is free, and then turned it into a mailer, almost like a Gemini mailer. I'm really impressed with this. Maybe it's just because I'm not ordering things a lot off of eBay, but I thought this was a really cost-effective way of shipping one comic. I could see how more than one comic wouldn't fit in this, but what are your thoughts? Do you think this was a good way to mail this? Once I showed this to my wife, she was impressed with the realism as well. That's what brought me to this cover, the realistic representation of Mary Marvel. And there you go, Champions of Shazam number one, covered by Joshua Middleton. Again, I'd like to thank the comic book estate for inspiring me to pull the trigger on this beautiful comic. If I'm shipping one comic, like this DC Universe Rebirth Batgirl number one, or maybe up to 10 comics, I'm gonna use the following items. A manila envelope, cardboard, padded flat rate envelope, painter's tape, and packing tape. Luckily, I asked a friend of mine for a manila envelope and he said, hey, I got two boxes of those things over there. You want them? I'm like, sure. I also cut the padded flat rate envelope down the size so it will fit the comic and provide some extra protection. Plenty of free cardboard at my work also, just needs to be cut down to size. I have a template that makes that pretty easy. The padded flat rate envelopes are also free. Just go to usps.com and they will deliver them to your house. I use painter's tape to secure the comic to the cardboard on all four corners. I also tab the tape for easy removal. Give it a little shake, make sure it's secure. Now I secure the top and bottom pieces of cardboard together using packing tape. I like to tab the packing tape as well. Easier to remove that way, don't have to use a knife. Also fold and tape the manila envelope to make sure the package is not moving inside the envelope. And there you go, ready to label and then head off to the post office. I would love to hear any suggestions, improvements, or hacks y'all use when y'all are shipping y'all's comics. Please put them in the comments below and we'll see you next time around the comic rack.